Now, any of my older subscribers know that I don't put any content on my channel without backing it up scientifically. Around 40 days back, I took up a diet called the ketogenic diet. 40 days back, I looked like this. Two weeks after that, I looked like this. This is a picture from a shoot I did recently. Now, I used to be like this guy. Arey bro, you're doing a keto diet or what? You want to lose all your muscles or what? You want to get cancer or what? There's a lot of myths and misconceptions that are going around when it comes to the ketogenic diet. As with anything fitness related, if you want to understand it better, you got to science the shit out of it. Okay, before we start this video, vegetarians of India, I'm really sorry, but this particular diet is just not meant for you. All the vegetarian protein sources in India have some amount of carbohydrates. That's why for vegetarians, it's super difficult to execute this diet properly. So basically, a keto diet is a super low carb diet. And by super low carb, I mean really super low carb. There's a serious threshold if you want to execute the ketogenic diet well. Now, some studies say that a ketogenic diet is basically staying below 50 grams of carbs. But from my own experience, the only time I actually did a ketogenic diet was when I stayed below 20 grams of carbs. Now, I've met so many people who think they're on a ketogenic diet when really they're just on a low carb diet. In an actual keto diet, you gotta account for every single thing you're eating. When I was doing the keto diet, I used to count even the pods of garlic that I was adding to my food. And I've seen people who do keto diets where they eat fruit and they eat junk food. It's not like that. You have to eat homemade food during a ketogenic diet and ideally, it should be made by you. You should be in control of what you're eating and you should make sure you stay below 20 grams. Remember, the golden rule when it comes to ketosis is you need to stay below 20 grams of overall carbs for the day and you gotta make sure that all the carbs you're having, you're getting barely any sugar from that. That's why we even avoid things like onions, tomatoes, bell peppers, you know, anything that has a slightly high sugar content, you can't do it if you wanna undergo ketosis. Okay, but when it comes to food items, we'll cover that later in the video. First, you need to understand the exact science of what happens in a ketogenic diet. Okay, the first thing you need to understand is that your body's favorite energy source is carbohydrates. Your body breaks down carbohydrates into glucose and stores that glucose as glycogen in your muscles. Okay, so in a ketogenic diet, we're cutting off this fuel source. So we're cutting off all the carbohydrates first and there's no glucose for your body to derive from the carbohydrates. So then it turns to the glycogen in your muscles. And eventually, once the glycogen runs out, this is where ketosis starts. Okay, what happens next is that there's a lot of biochemistry that goes on, but you don't need to know all that. All you need to know is that your body starts breaking down its own fat stores and converting them to something called ketone bodies. So these ketone bodies are basically tiny fuel tanks that do the same job as basic glucose that you get from carbohydrates. So all those people who tell you, oh dude, how does your brain work on keto? Well, actually one gram of ketone bodies gives you more energy than one gram of glucose. So keep that in mind. This diet is the most effective fat burning diet in the world. It changes the environment in your body and it makes your body utilize fat for energy. So eventually even the dietary fat, the fat that you're eating can be utilized for energy just the way you were utilizing rice and roti for energy earlier. But it's not all magical. There are a few downsides to ketosis. If you want to burn fat, remember even during ketosis, you need to be in a caloric deficit. The next downside is that your strength will definitely go down. Remember, as with any cutting diet, here you're losing weight. When you lose weight, you'll definitely lose some strength. The next downside is that you can't expect to build much muscle mass while following a ketogenic diet. Remember, it's primarily a fat burning diet that's meant for someone who's bulked up and is looking to get cut or someone who's just trying to cut fat in general. So it's the ideal diet for those bulky bros and anyone who's just looking for general fat loss. Okay, and the last downside to keto, the keto flu. This is actually the reason the ketogenic diet has such a bad name. But trust me, I've gone through the keto flu myself and it's not that bad. It's not an actual cold that you'll get, but you know, you feel kind of nauseous or you get a headache and you just feel a little bit fatigued. But keep in mind, this is happening because your body's draining your muscles of glycogen. So you can actually reduce the duration of the keto flu if you work out. So if you work out, the glycogen in your muscle runs out fast and you enter ketosis faster. But if if you don't work out, the keto flu might last for around 4 or 5 days, but even then, it's not that bad. You can definitely handle it. Okay, now coming to all the food items you're allowed to have during ketosis. Any non-veg that should ideally be home-cooked. 
So any red meat, chicken, eggs, fish, any of that. And what's great about ketosis is that you're allowed to have a lot of fat from a lot of fat sources. So any oil, ghee, coconut oil, butter, animal fat, anything that will basically make your food tastier, you're allowed to have. Okay, and finally, coming to the most important aspect of ketosis, in my opinion, you have to have vegetables and you need to be super selective about the vegetables. Remember, you can't have everything. So I'll give you a quick list of what you can have. Anything leafy, so that's spinach, cabbage, iceberg lettuce, normal lettuce, red cabbage, broccoli works really well, zucchini works really well. But with all the other vegetables, including carrots, beetroot, and almost everything that I've not mentioned, they're all a little bit dangerous to have during ketosis. So if you want to execute ketosis well, these are the vegetables you need to stick to. Now remember, you're allowed to have 20 grams of carbs and no more. So you got to make sure that in those 20 grams, you fit in all those vegetables and nothing else ideally. Yeah, vegetables are that important. It'll prevent you from being constipated from all that meat. It'll give you all your nutrition and it'll just keep you healthy overall, which according to me is the main reason you should be attempting a ketogenic diet in the first place. Okay, so that's what you can eat, but keep in mind there's a bunch of food items that people think you can have on ketosis, which you really shouldn't be having. On the top of every list is cheese. Remember, processed cheese has a lot of carbs and it'll put you out of ketosis almost immediately. Secondly, paneer. Any milk product generally has some amount of carbohydrates. So if you want to take ketosis to the next level, I'd even advise you to completely avoid dairy during ketosis. Third, nuts. Now I know nuts are a super healthy fat source and all that, but with all that fat, you're also getting a substantial amount of carbohydrates. If you want to execute keto well, keep your nut intake super low. Also peanut butter. For some reason, everyone thinks you can have peanut butter during ketosis. Remember the way to go during keto is don't have anything processed. Okay, a very important concept to note, there are two kinds of ketogenic diets. The first is for bodybuilders who are trying to cut down from being bulked up, who are just trying to burn fat and conserve muscle. The second is the textbook ketogenic diet, which is meant for the average person who's just looking to burn fat. So this is what the textbook ketogenic diet looks like. Your entire calories for the day, which should be below maintenance, should be split like this. You need 60 to 70% from fat. You need 5% from carbs, no more. And the remaining you need to get from protein. So if you split your calories this way, you'll end up burning fat very rapidly. But the textbook ketogenic diet doesn't apply to me and it won't apply to you if you're a gymmer. If you gym and you've already built a substantial amount of muscle mass and then you want to get leaner, your main friend again is your protein goal. Watch my video on protein requirements to calculate your own. So during a ketogenic diet, if you're looking to burn fat, you just need to hit about 80% of your protein goal and get your remaining calories from fat and that'll do the trick for you. Eventually, after being on ketosis for a while, you'll see that your appetite decreases and then you can even afford to reduce your protein intake and you'll still keep burning fat and more importantly, you'll be conserving strength and muscle. Okay, and the final concept you need to know when it comes to ketosis is the concept of refeed days or carb up days. So every 10 to 14 days, you'll have to take up a refeed day where you can afford to go up to 400 or 500 grams of carbs in a day. Now you've got to make sure that none of these carbs come from sugar. So even on these days, you have to give up sugar. If you're keen on doing ketosis, but you have a sweet tooth at the same time, I highly recommend you check out my BB40 challenge video. After watching it, you'll know why I've recommended it. So basically the guideline is just go and have a cheat meal where you avoid sugar, but you can have rice or you can have a burger made of bread, anything like that. And you can go up to 400 grams of carbs. That's a lot, but only once every 10 to 14 days, no lesser than that. Okay, so that's all you need to know about the ketogenic diet for now. But I want to end this video by saying that if you're not going to do this diet for at least a month, don't even take it up. That's because initially in the first two, three weeks, the results are super rapid. And then a lot of people are tempted to give up. So what happens is once you do it for two weeks, you lose a lot of weight, including all that glycogen from your muscles and all your water weight. And then the moment you go off ketosis, you'll put on that weight again by eating normal food. So unless you're going to do it for a prolonged period, a minimum of 30 days, don't take it up. Hey guys, so that was the video for today. Now you've got to keep in mind that a ketogenic diet can be done for a maximum of three months, no longer than that. Now in those three months, a diet will be super beneficial for your health. So all these people who tell you things like it'll cause cancer and all, don't believe them unless they've backed it up with scientific research. Either way, if you want a closer look at the food that I ate during my ketogenic diet, make sure you check out my keto recipes playlist. All these were my go-to food recipes when following the ketogenic diet. 
So if you want to follow my personal fitness journey, those are my handles and that's my Facebook page. Remember, throughout my ketogenic diet experience, I track my entire journey on those handles. So make sure you give me a follow.